Hello everyone, and welcome to the Dark Elf Ranger build. This is the first of many scan tutorials and build guides that I'll be uploading to YouTube. And let me start out by saying that I won't be doing a lot during this filming. So if you want to see this build in practice, I recommend just waiting for a day or so, by which point I will have uploaded the action recordings of me actually fighting with this build. And you'll get to see how it works in practice, rather than just me blabbing on about it in the background. So. Right, bef before we get into anything else, then let me just say that this build is designed for Master or Legendary difficulty, but I would not recommend it for inexperienced players, as at low levels especially, it is quite a difficult build to Master, especially before you start getting to the enchanting and smithing aspects. Now, let's get into the backstory then, shall we? The Dark Elf Ranger was born in the city of Blacklight. His mother was a devout priestess of Mephala, and his father was an Telvani wizard. Due to his father being a wizard, he spent a lot of time in his childhood studying the arcane arts, although as he grew older, it became apparent to him that he was not going to be a skilled wizard, and was not inherently gifted in magic whatsoever. Although he did find that he had quite a flair for enchanting, this would be nowhere near enough to get him to the status of a master Telvani wizard like his father. He'd always felt restless living in black light. He never quite liked the city, and had always wanted to journey beyond the borders of Morrowind and see the world to meet new people and experience new things. When he finally became of age, he decided that he'd use his skills in archery and swordsmanship to travel across Tamriel and see the world. When he told his father of this though, he soon found himself regretting it. His father was furious, demanding that he stayed on the property until he was ready to abandon his hopes of adventure and resume his studies of the arcane arts. Fortunately for the ranger, his mother did not agree with this decision. Knowing that she could never convince his father to relent, she slipped the key to the house under the door one night, and then, once the ranger had escaped, she smuggled him across the border into Skyrim and told him to head for Cyrodiil. Of course, on the border to Cyrodiil, he was caught by an Imperial patrol, seen, seen as a Stormcloak rebel, and taken to Helgen for execution. Of course, you know the rest. So, now that we've got the basic background out of the way, let's get on to perks and skill investments. So open this up shall we firstly we'll go over smithing then so smithing is blindingly obvious for light armor you're going to need to go to the left and the perks you're going to need are as follows steel smithing elven smithing advanced armors just for that nice scaled and plate armor but you obviously you won't be needing a plate armor being a light armor character then you need to go onto glass armor and up to dragon armor because not only will that give you the best arm on the game, but also the best weapons on the game. Provided you do have Dawnguard installed. And if you're playing this on Special Edition, then of course you'll already have Dawnguard and Dragonborn and Halfire included. But that about wraps it up for smithing. Oh, oh wait, no, sorry about that. Just one more perk to discuss, and that's Arcane Blacksmith. Now, because we are using enchanting, we will need Arcane Blacksmith, just because it's incredibly tedious to have to go and create new sets of armor and smith them up every time you get your enchanting to a higher level so definitely get arcane black because you will find that to be very very helpful now the next thing is enchanting them we'll just get this out of the way first because the enchanting is less obvious than the smithing but i think with enchanting fire frost and shock enchanting so sorry about that um here fire frost and shock enchanting is not really necessary for this build to be honest because we need enchanting so that we can increase the efficiency of our weapons and give ourselves some nice magic resistance and I'll tell you why in a minute once I actually go over the playstyle. So the perks you'll need to get are as follows. You're going to need to get Enchanter 5 out of 5. Of course I haven't got 5 out of 5 yet so if I haven't got all the perks I discussed and that's just because I'm only level 36 at the moment but when I upload the live action videos on this build then you'll see that I will be of a high level and I'll definitely have some more interesting abilities. So you'll want to get all five perks in Enchanter because this will help to really maximise the efficiency of um, your enchantments and really really help you get that nice extra damage for your weapons, for your bows especially. And then Insightful Enchanter for skill enchantments, once again for one handed and archery, this is going to be useful. And then here we are, for Corpus Enchanter, and you're going to want this so that you can enchant your gear with Fortify Stamina, because Fortify Stamina is useful for this build, and I'll tell you why in a minute. So, 
Of course, extra effect is essential. If you want to be an enchanter, then extra effect just goes without saying. If you get to enchanting 100, then definitely get extra effect because this is going to increase your well, damage and your resistance to magic by an absolutely absurd amount. So just think about it this way then. Say you have a ring that increases your bow damage and a necklace that increases your one-handed damage. Once you've got extra effect, both your ring and your necklace will increase your archery damage and your one-handed damage. So you can see that it really does start to build up. And of course, once you reach this perk, you'll probably be a master enchanter anyway. You'll probably have all five in enchanter, corpus enchanter, and encyclopedia enchanter, of course, just to get to it. But no, I really wouldn't recommend storm, frost, or fire enchanter, as this build relies on enchanting, like I say, just for the damage boost to weapons and for the resistance to magic and anything else is really just an added bonus so now that we've done smithing and enchanting let's move on to one-handed so of course i'm probably going to get someone in the comments who said is it all right for me to use two-handed weapon because i've had these sort of things before when i had a different channel i used to upload these now one-handed i think is for a ranger build it's it's so much better than two-handed that it's it's almost not even it's not even worth really considering two-handed for a range build because two-handed weapons swing much more slowly than one-handed weapons of course with the exception of some unique weapons but of course those unique weapons are not going to do high enough damage for us anyway so of course battle axes great swords and warhammer swing much too slowly for us and they're very heavy which means that we're not going to be able to move as quickly as you'd like so one-handed of course you're not going to need any of the perks and um bladesman bone breaker or hack and slash early on only get them at high levels i'd say and even so bladesman which is one we'll probably be using really isn't that effective so uh, it's debatable whether or not you want them although of course it's your build so feel free to do that if you feel that you want critical damage yeah of course go for it but if if not then i would probably recommend against it now savage strike critical charge and fighting stance of course you'll need all these and then once you get to 100 you'll want paralyzing strike just for that chance to paralyze your enemies it it might seem like an obscure chance as it only does 25 percent paralyzing the target with a backwards power attack but you'd be surprised how often this actually activates in game now here armsman of course it goes without saying you'll need all five perks in armsman okay because armsman is just essential for any one-handed character to maximize the damage you do and i'd recommend using swords because swords hit much much faster than two-handed weapons and faster than war axes and of course maces so swords are effective as well because you can get these hits in and then you can back away as you're fighting which is very very nice this means that you can avoid a very large amount of the melee damage that your enemies do in combat while still giving out quite a deal of punishment to them with the one-handed weapons. Now, as you can see, I've managed to get mine all the way up to 115 damage. And, of course, I did enchant it with shock damage just because I had that option. I thought, well, I'm an enchanter. Why not? So, now that we've discussed that, basically, let's get on to archery, then. Archery, as a ranger character, archery is another thing that I think is pretty much essential to a range of character to be honest now especially at low levels when you don't really have any decent armor you're trying to fight in fur hide imperial light armor chitin light armor anything like that which really doesn't soak up much damage at all so you're going to want to keep your distance from enemies at this level and at that point you're going to need to have archery of course and this doesn't mean that at low levels you can't use one-handed but i just really recommend against it because it's it's especially difficult on martial legendary difficulty which is what i recommend playing on it's almost impossible to actually fight groups of bandits at low level with barely no armor and just a sword and shield so yeah you're going to need all five perks and overdraw of course and then critical shot we're going to take critical shot although it's debatable how useful the skill actually is it's it's still the sort of thing where you you just need to get it you need to sacrifice a perk point here and hunter's discipline is okay actually i know a lot of youtubers especially say that hunter's discipline is useless and it's a waste of a perk it shouldn't be in the game but i'm not sure it's worth having its own perks i think it'd be nice if it were included with critical shot or ranger 
or maybe quick shot, but no, I think it can be useful considering that as a smith you're going to be forging all your own arrows, especially if you have Dawn God that is. So you want to be able to recover as many arrows as possible, that way you won't have to keep going around spending money on arrows. And then Ranger, Ranger, another one that's essential. Ranger means that you can move more quickly with a drawn bow. Now I, I haven't got the perk to illustrate it, but I'll just show you. Currently, if I've got my bow drawn, I'm moving much more slowly, aren't I, as you can see. Now this means that I'm not really going to be able to back away while firing, effectively. So, once you get Ranger, that means that you'll effectively be able to do the same thing with as you do with one-handed, where you just back away, take the shot, and then go in for the another attack, back away and keep doing this because eventually you'll wear your enemies down and even against groups of enemies you will be able to kill them off very quickly indeed. Now on the left hand side of course you're going to need to take Eagle Eye which really does help and of course that's just another essential perk. Steady Hand, I've only taken one out of two because I think Steady Hand two out of two it slows it to the point where it's really, it's actually quite difficult to judge the speed of your enemy's movement once you've got two perks in steady hand because 50% is an absolutely massive reduction into the flow of time whereas 25% I think is just about right another thing to consider is that of course if it's slowing time by 50% you're going to be using up a lot more stamina for each shot and that's really not what you want especially when I get into later on what we'll be doing with bashes now power shot power shot is another interesting perk that's another interesting perk that you're probably going to need because it's it's nice to be able to stagger enemies when they're running at you with a warhammer or a battle axe because that's that's exactly what you want. And then quick shot, of course. If you can draw a bow thirty percent faster, then that means that you can get thirty percent more arrows into your enemies, and that's of course going to increase your damage by quite a lot. And then bullseye, of course, at the end. So you're going to need to in all take yeah. It probably would be easier for me to just say take every perk in archery except for the second steady hand perk and then light armor finally light armor is interesting light armor i find is one of the most tedious skills in the game to level up and i'm sure it's well it is widely regarded as one of the most irritating skills to level up because as a light armor character you're normally trying to avoid a lot of damage rather than just taking it like a heavy armored character would so i've managed to get mine up to 67 but that's just because i've use that old trick of leaving myself in front of a pack of wolves and you know, going and making a cup of tea while they bite me and I think that's it but once you do get your light armor to a high level then of course don't hesitate to put perks in because that's really going to help when you do get hit by something nasty like a lurker or a giant to reduce the amount of damage you take now custom fit obviously you're going to need custom fit if only to get to unhindered and wind walker which are really essential because as a range you want to be moving quickly you want to be light on your feet and you want to be able to outrun your enemies Okay, and then with Windwalker, stamina regenerates 50% faster. This perk is ridiculous. Okay, this is one of the best. I think this is probably the best one in the tree, to be honest. Now, if you just watch, look how quick this stamina regenerates. I've got no enchantments that increase stamina regeneration, and it regenerates so quickly. You see there, within about five seconds or four seconds, my stamina is back to where it was, which is very much amazing for a character like this. So. Now, matching set, yeah, if you if you use a matching set, get matching set, but if you don't, don't use matching set, That that's what it comes down to then. It's really up to personal preference, it's your build, I can't tell you how to do it. it. Of course, these builds are just guidelines and these are just ideas. If you want to change it in any way, then feel free, because it is your game, of course. And then, death movement. Mm, death movement, yeah, I think death movement is useful, because 10% is a lot. That's 1 in, one in 10 times that you actually get bitten by a dragon or clubbed by a giant. You're just not going to take any damage and that's really useful that will probably save your life on many occasions if you do get it and now that about does it for the skill sets so now i'm just going to tell you about the playstyle. the other thing is block now block we aren't going to be taking any skills and like i'm saying that's why i said it does it for the skill sets we're not taking any perks and block whatsoever if you really want to then like i say go ahead it's your build but i really wouldn't because primarily we're using a shield just to bolter the armor rating now, I've got it to 451 just with smithing and enchanting, and then the shield really helps. You see, the, con the shield can considerably boost your armor rating. So, you will want the shield for the armor rating, and you'll want it for something else. And, of course, that's the bashes, because it's very, very helpful to be able to interrupt ba bashes with bashes when a heavy enemy like a dragon or a giant is about to attack you. And especially at low levels, you want to be able to do this. I'll just show you on him quickly. 
Oh, doesn't feel like fighting, apparently. Well, anyway, you see how it works then. And the other thing about shields, which I think is quite a nice bonus, is that you can enchant them. So, I've given mine 29% frost resistance, because Dark Elves have no inherent resistance to frost. It's nice to have that on the side. And then, of course, at high levels with extra effect, you can give it all sorts of interesting things. So, yeah, I think that about wraps it up for all the perk investments and the enchantments, except I would recommend this. I would recommend enchanting everything you can with wielding and archery, because that's massively going to bulk your damage. I mean, here, 115 damage with a sword and 107 with the bow, when it's actually done, it's all up to 125. So, yeah, it, it does really help with that enchanting. And that about does it for the enchanting. So, now... Next thing I'm going to get on to is the playstyle. So it might it might seem like this is just sort of a tank character but with light armor, but it, it's not because especially at low levels, like I was saying, you're going to be using your sword to just get in and out quickly. And okay, I'll just see if there's any enemies over here on which to demonstrate. But yep, here we are. So the idea is is that you can get in, you can bash them if they are attacking too close. Obviously, this is quite difficult to avoid. But I'll just show you. The idea is to not let them actually get any melee attacks in. Especially in one-on-one -on -one fights. It's very easy to just take absolutely no damage. Especially against non-magic users. It's very, very easy to do that. And, I, especially with the bow as well. The bow, I'd recommend. You don't really use a bow if you're too close. Of course, for a situation like this, then you're going to want to use the bow just because... Oh, oops. That stupid thing, there's someone crept up on me. And you see how it works, don't you? Um, here we are, two handed. If you've got two at once, just back away. Back. Slash. Slash. And then you need to back away again. And then at this point. And then you can. If, if it comes down, but you can just block. Of course, you can just block. That's good. Of course, if it comes down, you can just block instead of bashing. But I wouldn't recommend this. Now. I think that about wraps up the range build. So, if you have any questions or if there's anything you think I could improve in the videos, because this is pretty much my first try at starting builds and tutorials, then make sure to leave it in the current video. I'm completely open to constructive criticism if you have any. So, thank you for watching and goodbye.